Hi everyone. So we know cauliflower makes beautiful mash and I know many of you adore my cauliflower and savoy cabbage bake. But broccoli actually makes tremendous mash as well. And that's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to accompany broccoli with one of my favorite vegetables and that is celeriac. They work so well together and they make wonderful, wonderful mash. So let me show you how to make this beautiful mash. So with my broccoli, I'm going to just cut it in chunks. So we're going to mash everything, but at the base of the broccoli, there is parts that are slightly tougher. So I'm going to just shave off the skin. Like that. And then remove the florets. So this is quite a small broccoli, so I'm using two of them. And then my celeriac. So if you've never tried celeriac before, please give it a go. Um, depends on where you are, it might have a different name. So it's a root vegetable. It may not be the prettiest thing you see, but the inside is absolutely beautiful. And we all know that's what really counts. The inner beauty. So I'm going to remove the tips. And you can see the pearly white flesh inside. And I'm going to just peel up the skin. So if you don't have celeriac, you can use other low-carb uh, root vegetables. So a good candidate would be something like turnip, for instance, or suede. So it's called suede in the UK. I think it's also called uh, rutabaga. It sounds really exotic, but it's actually suede. Um, and also jicama. I hope I haven't butchered the pronunciation. I don't think we have jicama in the UK, but I know it's quite readily available in many countries. So you can use jicama as well. Okay, so the skin is removed. And just like potatoes, it's got these sort of darker spots. And all you do is just use a knife to remove it. And it comes out quite easily. Lovely, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to just cut in small chunks. The easier way to do it, just kind of shave off one chunk at a time. So you want to cut in pieces that it takes roughly about the same time to cook as broccoli. Last bit. Cool. Look at the flesh. It's so lovely and it smells amazing. And I'm going to place my celeriac in a big pot. And then my broccoli as well. And then I'm going to add in some cold water. You want just enough to cover all the vegetables. And I'll say don't cheat with hot water. You want to cook everything from the cold water. It makes all the difference. So what I've got here is some porcini mushrooms, some dry porcini mushrooms. The smell is amazing. So I've got about a handful here. The amount is up to you. And then I'm going to add in some hot water here. So I just want enough water for the mushrooms to be reconstituted. I don't want too much because we're only going to use a small amount of the water. So I don't want to waste any of the flavors. And I'm going to just put it aside and allow them to soak. And while my broccoli and celeriac are being cooked, I'm going to slice some onions. So I'm going to cut them in thin slices. I know some people are wondering, is it okay to have onions? You know, it doesn't sound very keto. Let me tell you, you know, if you're doing well on keto, you're eliminating the starches, the bread, the sugar, you know, some onion, some carrots on a regular basis is not going to mess up your diet. Onions add so much flavor in your cooking. So focus on the big picture. It will be much more sustainable. And in my frying pan, I'm going to add in a generous amount of olive oil. And turn the heat on. I'm using medium heat. And then I'm going to pop in my onions. So I'm going to gently fry my onions until they're caramelized and golden brown.
Okay, I think I'm happy with my onions. And so you can see it's lovely and tender and it's got some brown bits here. That is so nice. Okay, I'm going to turn the heat off and then just set it aside. And here's the mushroom that's been soaked for about 15, 20 minutes and they've soaked up most of the liquid, so it's perfect. And I'm going to just uh, squeeze out the liquid for now. I'm going to keep the liquid on side and I'm going to just chop them finely. It smells so good. Porcini is just so divine. Lovely. So it's really finely chopped. So here we go. That's my broccoli and celeriac cooked. So you want to make sure you don't overcook the vegetables. So as soon as your fork can go in like this, you want to stop cooking. And same with celeriac. And it's really important. Otherwise your mash is going to be mushy. Okay. You want your mash to have legs to stand on. And now I'm going to drizzle a generous amount of olive oil. And I'm going to add in some coconut oil as well. I like the combination. It makes it really fragrant and creamy as well. And some salt. And then some garlic. I'm adding raw garlic straight in. And the heat is going to gently cook the garlic. And then I'm going to blitz it with a handheld blender. You can do it with a food processor as well. really lovely and smooth really creamy and now we're going to add in our onions it's lovely and golden brown going to add in the oil as well and then on porcini mushrooms and give it a mix so now it's time to check the seasoning as well I'm going to check the seasoning. Mmm, oh, tastes so good. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and some pepper. Mix the whole thing together. So look at this. So the mash would be perfect to eat as it is, but I'm going to bake it because I just love baked mash. It's ultimate comfort food. So I've got my pie dish here. And I'm going to just scoop in my mash. It looks, the consistency is just so good. And then just smooth it down to fill in all the gaps. It's such a satisfying dish to make. And particularly now it's getting a bit cooler and colder. You know, dishes like this is just so comforting. And just fill in all corners. And use a fork. We're going to make some pattern here. So it looks beautiful, but it also creates that lovely texture on top. It's going to be nice and golden brown. So I've got some pine nuts here. I'm going to sprinkle some pine nuts on top. You can use other nuts, but pine nuts really works well with this mash. And then we're going to drizzle some olive oil on top. So this will give it a golden brown finish. Lovely. So my mash is ready to go into the oven. So I'm going to bake it in a 220 degree preheated oven for about 20, 25 minutes, depends on your oven, or till it's nice and golden brown on the surface. Look at this, so beautiful. It just smells absolutely amazing. 
and let's plate up. So. So wonderful. And to go with my mash, I've got some salad on the side and it's so refreshing, it goes really well with this mash. So I've got some cucumber, cherry tomatoes and some olives, really, really simple. And I've got some vinaigrette, it's really, really easy to make. It's basically olive oil, apple cider vinegar, some salt and a dash of my secret ingredient, soy sauce. It provides almost balsamic quality to it. So I'm going to just drizzle my beautiful dressing on top and a bit of chives on top as well. Lovely. Right, time to eat. I can't wait. Still piping hot. Mmm. Wow. The texture is amazing. There's a hint of puccini mushrooms in the background, but it's not overpowering. And the pine nut just works so well with this mash. Mmm. Wow, so good. It's really good. Really delicious. And a bit of this gorgeous salad as well. Mmm. So good. <laughs> so simple and so good. Really refreshing. Right, so I hope you like today's recipe and we'll give it a go. This mash is so simple to do and so simply delicious. So follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. And uh, if you like what I'm doing, you can buy me a coffee. And thanks for hanging out with me today. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm going to enjoy this mash. So delicious. <laughs> <laughs>